Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang. I'm glad you could join me again for another edition of Food for Thought as we explore the parables of Jesus Christ. Well, today it's Wednesday, February the 17th, 2021. And uh, we're going to be discussing this morning uh, the parable of the marriage feast or the great banquet as found in the book of Matthew chapter 22 verses 1 to 14. So we're going to get right into the story. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who had been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention, and they went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but I, those who have I, I have invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone that you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all of the people they could find the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, How did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told his attendants, Tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. So when we look at this parable, uh, Jesus is telling this story about this great wedding feast, the wedding supper of the Lamb. The king is planning this for his son. At the end of the age, Jesus is going to have a great banquet with all of the people that are invited. The bride, his church, will be invited to this banquet. And uh, God has invited them. And they will come and they'll take their seats at the table. Now, the Lord has sent his invitation out to an initial crowd of people inviting them to come but they spurn his invitation and they continue to do what they were doing ignoring him now even more servants are then sent out to follow up with the initial invitations and they they go into even greater detail of how the king has prepared everything for this feast but some of these people couldn't take the time of day to listen to the invitation they went about their business and ignoring the servants and some of them mistreated the servants some of them even killed the servants now Jesus was speaking to the people oh the, the original Israelites were called and they're set apart they're they're told that they are God's chosen people and he invited them to come to his banquet to join uh, with the Messiah Jesus Christ in the wedding supper of the Lamb, to become his church, his bride. Well, um, they ignored his, for, for the most part, they ignored his invitation. And then he sent more servants to them. And they, they mistreated them. They went about their own business and they ignored him. And they even killed some of his apostles and prophets. And um, the ungrateful invitees, continue to spurn and mistreat these messengers to the point where the king was enraged. He was enraged and then he sent an army to go and to uh, burn and destroy their city. And Jesus was speaking to people prophetically of how the Jewish people were spurning his message and his messengers and how they would continue to do this until the point where uh, the great king, God, would become so enraged that he would send an army to destroy their city and burn it down. Well, we know what happened prophetically. This was a, a message to the Israelites saying, listen, I've sent you a message to come to my wedding ceremony, to come to my banquet, to be my church, but you continue to spurn me and ignore my call. So, what happened then? Well, we see prophetically 
the Roman army ended up sacking Jerusalem, destroying it, leveling it. They absolutely leveled the temple and scattered all the people. And, uh, you know, much in the same way that the Babylonians were used by God to punish the Israelites for that time, well, Jesus was talking about a time in the future, in the not too distant future, where those who spurned the invitation to join his church would uh, be punished and their city would be leveled. This is a direct prophecy of the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70 under the Roman Empire. Um, the nation was leveled, the people were scattered throughout the world until recently when they've been gathered back into the fold. Well, this is the second, um, I guess you could say the second return of people back to their land. Well, in fact, there was more than one. It would be um, the third, because the first one was with Assyria and Babylon, and then under uh, the Roman Empire in AD 70, and now they've gathered and uh, the Lord is still um, asking people to come to his wedding banquet from that original group. Well, some have been refused entry because they weren't worthy. It says right here they, they, they didn't deserve to come to the banquet because they had been given invitations. They'd been sent this wonderful message from the servants to tell them to come, and they still refused, so they didn't deserve it. So then Jesus is talking about telling his servants to go out and to go out into the rest of the world to the people that are from all nations from different, you know, status, uh, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. All are invited to his wedding banquet. The, uh, the fact is that God's message through the gospel has gone out to the ends of the earth. Anybody can come to the Lord. They're all invited. We're all invited to the table of the wedding supper of the Lamb on one condition, that we accept the invitation and that we put on the wedding clothes that God has asked us to put on. Well, this is um, clothing ourselves with uh, the righteousness of Christ by yielding to Him, by yielding to His instructions, by doing things His way. Now, there's some people out there that think that they can just go do what they want. They don't have to listen to the instructions in the Bible. They can kind of customize their plan to enter the kingdom of heaven and have a little bit of Jesus here and do their own thing. And They pretty much wear the same clothes spiritually that they wore before they were called. And uh, those who were wise took a look at these new clothes, these wedding clothes, beautiful clothes that God's given them, and put them on in preparation for the banquet. And when the banquet comes, they're going to be sitting at God's table, and they're going to be accepted into the banquet because they were invited, they accepted the invitation, and they wore the wedding clothes. But there's going to be some that will try to get in to heaven on their own terms. They won't want to listen to the instructions of Jesus Christ. They will want to try and get to heaven on their own terms. Well, the Bible says that our righteousness in ourselves is like filthy rags. You can't earn yourself a position at that table. You have to yield to God's instruction, accept the grace that he gives you, and be clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And that is the only way that you're going to be accepted into the banquet, because God's going to come along. And for those who are trying to do it on, on, on their own, they're trying to earn their way in there, they're going to find that they're not wearing appropriate clothing. They're not clothed in the righteousness of Christ. They're clothed in their own fleshly um, deeds, which really are filthy rags to God. So those people will find at the end, they expect that they're going to be accepted, but they're not. God's going to pick them out and say, why didn't you put on the wedding clothes that I gave you? Why didn't you obey my teaching? Why didn't you submit to Jesus and allow him to clothe you in his righteousness? Well, those people will be cast out. And along with those who spurned the Lord, who mistreated the servants and killed the servants, those who tried to get into the wedding feast without the proper clothing will be cast out into darkness 
where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth, they'll fall under the judgment of God. It's a terrible thing to fall into the judgment of God. God's willing that none should perish, that all should come to repentance. There are so many people that are called, but the Bible says that the, the gateway to life is narrow and the path is narrow, and few there are that find it. Unfortunately, in this big world, even though the invitation goes out to many, only a few of us have actually chosen to accept the invitation and to be obedient, to be clothed, and submit ourselves to be clothed in the righteousness that comes from Jesus. Well, I pray that all of you that are listening to this, that you'll be encouraged if you are following the Lord, that there is a wedding banquet coming. But if you're listening to this message and you're trying to get to heaven your own way, you're trying to earn your way to Christ, you, you need to, to give the Lord his due and be obedient to him and do it his way. There's only, there, there's only one way to, to God and that's through Jesus Christ through submitting to him and allowing him to cleanse you and clothe you in his righteousness. This is the only way. If you try to do it any other way, you're not going to make the cut because God's standard is holiness and purity and only the righteousness of Christ can make a sinful soul like yours and mine clean so that we're accepted into the eternal kingdom of God. I pray that you'll make that decision if you haven't. Submit to the Lord. Come to Him. Let go of your pride and, and live for Christ. You will not regret this. God bless you all today. This is Food for Thought.